Hey guys, it's Jesse. Welcome back to another episode of Comics Gathering. Um, we got another uh, Commander deck tech for you today in our series going along the uh, 2020 Commander Precons. Uh, today we're doing the Arcane Maelstrom deck tech. Um, so this is going to be the Calamex the Stormsire deck. Um, I left him as the Commander. Um, this is just overall kind of like a little upgrade and refocus of what uh, came in the original deck and just kind of theming it around. Um, I will be brewing with Calamax. He's probably my favorite commander out of this. So um, I have a really, really spicy brew I'm working on. I'll get it to you in the next couple of weeks after we get done with this. Um, but I'm really, really liking uh, Calamax and I can't wait to uh, get my physical copies of the deck. Uh, they should be mailing out shortly. That being said, let's get into the deck tech. Um, so starting off, we have the commander, which is Calamax the Stormsire. For one green, blue, red, we get a 4-4 legendary creature, Elemental Dinosaur. Um, whenever you cast your first instant spell each turn, if Calamax the Stormsire is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Whenever you copy an instant spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Calamax. So, the game plan here is we got to get Calamax tapped. We're going to copy instance. We're going to have other ways to copy instance. And we're going to pump up Calamax. So we have a couple different ways to win, um, but mostly this is just a value deck. Getting that instant doubling effect off of Calamax to double up uh, value. And uh, we have a couple ways to make sure that he is tapped so that way you can get that. And then we have some creatures who are gonna play well with instants and obviously and stuff. So let's go ahead and get into the deck tech, starting with our creatures. Um, up first, included in the pre-con, uh, Charmbreaker Devils. Uh, for five and a red, you get a four, four. At the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Charmbreaker Devils gets plus four, plus O oh until end of turn. So, a nice big threat. It's not very evasive, but it can just, you know, fire bolt in for a whole bunch of damage uh, if an opponent is open. And then also, this is just steady card advantage. Like, you're getting back an instant or sorcery. Granted, it is random each turn, but you're getting a card back. So, it's it's like you're drawing an extra card a turn. And it, it, the early stages of the game, when you only have a select few instant sorceries in your graveyard, you can kind of control the uh where this goes you can also do delve shenanigans with this where you delve out everything but the one you want so you can do stuff like that uh really like it uh we have crackling drake um it is a uh blue blue red red uh star four uh flying drake crackling drake's power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard when it enters the battlefield draw a card so again, this is just another big evasive threat that uh, is going to grow as the game goes on. Um, really like it in here. Uh, great way to uh, get uh, just a body that you can end your opponents with um, unless they remove it. And he's going to draw you a card at least if they do kill him. Uh, Dual Caster Mage. Um, for one red red, it is a 2-2 two -two with flash. Um, when it enters the battlefield, copy target, instant, or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So we have our first instance of how we're copying spells outside of Calamax. Um, he's basically just cast your spell, flash him in, copy the spell, do more shenanigans. Um, really, really uh, good in this deck, um, especially with some of the add-ins I've added, I've put in here. So. Uh, no, not really too much to explain there. Next we have uh, Itali, Primal Storm. Uh, four red, red, uh, legendary creature, Elder Dinosaur. 6-6, uh, six, six, and whenever he attacks, you exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying your mana cost. Mm. So, Itali is going to net you all that free value you're going to be able to cast a bunch of spells and more importantly because we're already focused on copying uh instance there's going to be instance instances of a tally exiling an instant that you want to copy 
Um, so that'll be really nice because you do actually cast the spell, so you can't copy it. Um, this is uh, probably one of the more interesting cards. Uh, I really do like this card. It kind of punishes your opponents for playing instance and playing at instant speed. Uh, for two and a green, you get uh, this is up next. We have Glade Noose. Um, two and a green for a two four beast. Whenever a player casts a spell, if it's not their turn, that player draws a card. Now, does this help out everyone at the table? To an extent. Um, there are going to be decks that cannot benefit off of this. There are going to be decks that can take advantage of it more so than you can. But the goal here is, is it's kind of like one of those little peace offering cards. Like, hey, me and you, we both play at instant speed. I'm going to play this moose. You leave me alone. We're, we'll both draw cards. We'll get rid of everyone else. And you can forge alliances like that. So, um, really like the political capabilities of this card. Um, up next, we have uh, Goblin Dark Dwellers. For three red red, you get a four four with menace. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant or sorcery with converted mana cost three or less from the graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put back in your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So, additional value. Um, you know, basically a restrictive, you know, but and bad Snapcaster Mage, but really, really good in the sense that uh, you also get a 4-4 Menacing Body afterwards. So, I don't hate that. Um, next we have our Partner Pair. <sighs> Halden Abbot Arcanist. Uh, for two and a blue, you get a 1-4 legendary creature human wizard it partners with taco arcane retriever you may play non-creature cards from exile with fetch counters on them if you exiled them you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells so we're going to jump to paco real quick because he's obviously paired with him uh, paco arcane retriever for three red green you get a three three legendary creature elemental hound partners with Haldan, Abbot Arcanist, he comes in with haste, and whenever he attacks, exile the top card of each player's library and put a fetch counter on each of them. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Paco for each non-creature card exiled this way. Um, so, obviously, Paco's going to steal cards from your opponent, Haldan's going to let you cast those cards, um, so it's kind of like a split up Atali. But having that redundancy is nice, and Paco can grow into a massive threat. Um, he just keeps growing and growing and growing, and your opponent has to, you know, burn spot removal on him, uh, especially if you do the trample. Especially if you can go do trample, um, he ends up being able to do some really gnarly things. Next up, we have a Lunar Mystic, two blue blue for a two two. Whenever you cast an inspo, you may pay one. If you do, draw a card. It's pretty straightforward. You got extra uh, mana, you got card draw. Um, Melek, is it Paragon? Comes in the deck, four blue red. Um, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may cast the top card of your library if it's an instant or sorcery card. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your library, copy it. You may choose new targets or the copy. Um, obviously, you see that this interlaces really well with what Calamax is trying to do. You have both these on the field at the same time. You're going to be doing all sorts of bonkers shenanigans because you could have a Calamax tapped and have a Melek cast uh, an instant off the top of your deck and get three copies of it uh, because Calamax is going to copy it too. So, uh, not to mention some of the other copying things we have in here. You can really chain these things together. Uh, Murmuring Mystic, uh, three and a blue for a one five. Human Wizard, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So you just make a bunch of birds, and they're good blockers, they're good attackers because they're evasive flyers. So kind of gives you just extra value because you're already playing a bunch of instants and sorceries anyhow. Um, mostly instants in this case, actually. Nibbles of Frost, uh, two blue blue for a 3-3 three, three flying with prowess. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, tap target creature and opponent controls that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step so if 
towards the late game, you've built a couple of your utility creatures, or you've made a bunch of tokens off of uh, like Lunar Mystic. Uh, we're also playing a Tower End in here, and you have a bunch of tokens, and you just need to get in, boom, 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 fire off some spells, tap the key blockers down, push in with all your uh, flying or your evasive creatures, and or get in on the ground now because you've tapped all their stuff. Um, so really like that in here. Plus it has prowess, so it can actually be a legitimate threat. Um, next up we have a uh, Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. For two green and blue, you get a two, three legendary creature, Elf Druid. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with converted mana cost less than that spell, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't cast the revealed card, put it into your hand. So, again, another way to just kind of uh, get free value. It's not quite cloning the spells, but it does let you cheat uh, out instants, and you are casting them. So, again, if the first thing you cast was a creature uh and you know you haven't cast an instant this turn and it snags an instant and your talamax is already tapped you can double it up uh next we have probably the most important card in the deck and that is seedborn muse um you need muse so bad uh and it's relatively uh cheap now clocking in at the time of recording for like seven dollars and 41 cents on tcg player um so you probably get one for seven eight bucks really easily and this is going to make your deck so much better. Um, for three green green, uh, you get a two four spirit. Untap all permanents you control during each player's untap step. Obviously, that's very crucial because you want to be able to do cast your instance on any of your opponent's turn, but you also need to stick creatures that are going to benefit from you casting instance. So this gives you just so much mana so you can keep doing stuff like that. Um, next, we have everyone's favorite little utility artifact. And that's a uh, Solemn Simulacrum. Um, for four mana, you get a 2-2. Two -two, uh, enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on tap. And then when Solemn Simulacrum dies, you may draw a card. So again, just a nice little value creature. He slots into a lot of decks. Um, Tower in the Sky Summoner, I did mention him earlier, but we'll go over him here just in case you don't know at this point. Uh, you probably should, but for two blue-blue, you get a 2-2 two -two legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. Obviously that, plus Lunar Mystic, can stack up into a lot of evasive flying bodies really quickly. Um, so again, a great way to take over. Uh, another little addition of mine that I really uh, really think is necessary for the deck is Fat Caster Mage. Uh, Torrential Gear Gearhawk. Uh, four blue blue for a 5-6 uh, with flash. When it enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into the graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Um, also, at the time of recording, he's fairly cheap. Uh, you can get him for six bucks. Um, he's TCG player average of 624. So, again, nice, cheap little upgrade to the deck that can help it out a lot. Plus, he's a 5 6 with flash. That's a body size you don't scoff at. Like, he can come down and just chunk out an opponent's threat um and then also flash back something that can answer several other ones um another great addition for the uh for the deck comes from theros beyond death and that is wave break hippocamp for two and a blue you get a two two uh elemental creature horsefish um love that creature type by the way not seahorse horsefish um <laughs> what if that's what we called seahorses horsefish um, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. Uh, so, you're playing instance, you're playing on your opponent's turn. Uh, first, first spell on their turn, boom, draw a card. You drew another instant, wait till your opponent's next turn, boom, another, keeps going. You see how that cycle keeps riding. Really, really good. Um, also included in the deck, they give you a Wart the Raid Mother. Um, so for four and then two, uh, red-green hybrid mana. Um, you get a 3-3 that when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 red-green goblin warrior creature tokens. And each red or green instant or sorcery spell you cast has Conspire. Now, if you don't know what Conspire does, it's as you cast the spell, you may tap uh, two untapped creatures you control that share a color with it. When you do, copy it, and you may choose new targets for the copy so 
what you're trying to do here is basically use these little goblin tokens because they're red and green to all of your red and green instants tap these two guys when you cast it and they're going to copy it which will help you out with calamax now you'll see later on we have some cards that are copy spells so now we're copying the copy spell which copies and we get a lot of copies it's like fedex or not fedex staples in here it's like staples lots of copies um and finally <laughs> we have uh I'm gonna butcher this name. Uh, Zithras, the rise, uh, the writhing storm. Um, for two green, blue, red, uh, legendary creatures, snake leviathan, three five flyer. Uh, whenever an opponent draws a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, create a one one green snake creature token. Whenever Zithras, the writhing storm, deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. So. He gets in as an evasive flying threat. He deals damage to your opponent, but both you and that player draw cards. Then, because your opponent drew cards that weren't their draw step cards, they you then get to make one ones uh, equal to the number of cards that they draw. So, for example, Zithras at base is a three five. You get in. He deals three to your opponent. Your opponent gets to draw three cards. You get to draw three cards and make three 1-1 one, one green snakes. Um, yes, usually giving your opponent cards is bad. However, if you play this from a political standpoint, this card can be very, very good. You get to make deals now. You get to say, hey, let me hit you with Zithras. Uh, don't block it. Don't kill it. We will both get to draw cards. And yes, I'm going to get the 1-1s, one, but I'll leave you alone. I'll just we'll just draw cards so we can get the card advantage to beat out everyone else and then you know you get to you get to negotiate here and I really like that capability here as well um, moving into uh, sorceries we play two um, big sorcery count here uh, we play uh, one of my favorite additions to the deck and I think it's very necessary for this deck um, and again super cheap pickup uh, Less than $3 right now on TCG Player. That's bonus round for one red red. Uh, you get a sorcery that until the end of turn, whenever a uh, player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that player copies it and may choose new targets for the copy. So you get to double up all of your spells for a turn. Um, obviously, this is bonkers powerful. Um, however, it's anyone. So if your opponent has the ability to uh, maybe interact and screw up what you're doing, that could be bad. But generally, you're gonna be able. You're gonna wait till everyone's like tapped down and they're kind of like you have the opening, um, and then you're gonna shoot this. And you're just gonna start going off, and your Calamax is gonna be huge, and you're gonna copy a bunch. Of so the copying bonus round is bonkers because now everything that you cast is going to triple so keep that in mind <laughs> you'll see how some of these combos string together here in a little bit uh, and then also included in the deck is a surreal memoir um, for three and a red you get a sorcery return an instant card at random from your graveyard to your hand the random part's kind of iffy and it is four mana but it does have a rebound so again, on your next turn, you get to rebound this spell. Um, also, because most of your uh, cloning effects uh, on spells are copying, uh, copy instants or sorceries, you can hit this with one of those, copy it up a couple of times, um, and then get all those back. Now, granted, the copies uh, that go on the stack don't, aren't, aren't a real card, so they don't rebound, but um, the Surreal Memoir physical copy will. Um, going into instance, let's break these down and why we're running what we're running. Um, artifact mutation, they included in the deck, good reprint. Um, red and a green instant, destroy target artifact, it can't be regenerated, and you get to create X11 one, one green sapperling creature tokens where X is that artifact's converted mana cost. So obviously, picking off any problematic artifact at the table is good. Picking off any problematic artifact at the table 
at instant speed is even better. And when you do that at instant speed and you get to make a bunch of 1 1 sapperlings, that's bonkers. Now, if you double that up and you can kill two, amazing bet. Uh, Channel Force uh, is an Aquaria card that I added in here. It helps us dig through our deck um, and just get to the cards we need. If we have a bunch of dead stuff in hand that isn't really helping, also doubling this up can really, uh, really be bonkers. So when you cast it, you discard X cards. It's a uh, two blue red instant. Discard X cards. Target player draws X cards. Channeled Force deals X damage up to one target creature or planeswalker. Now, you don't cast copies, so you don't have to pay any additional uh, cost. It's already on the stack at the X value you've established with the initial copy. So when you copy Channel Force, you're now drawing twice of whatever X is. So let's just say you have, in a hand of five, after you cast this, you have three extra lands. You pitch those three lands to Channel Force, you get to hit something for three, creature or planeswalker, and then draw three cards. But if you double this up, you can now hit something else for three, or you can double up and now kill something with like, that uh, has like six toughness, um, and you get to draw an additional three. So now you're drawing six cards. So the sky is really the limit of how you double up this spell. Um, it's gonna draw you a lot of cards, and it's gonna hopefully kill some problematic creatures along the way. Speaking of getting rid of problematic creatures, Chaos War, for two and a red, the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library and then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, he or she puts it onto the battlefield. Chaos Warping Away Problem Permanence has been an EDH staple going on for a long time. Cloning that Chaos Warp to maybe hit two or three permanents, even better. Uh, Chemistry's Insight, um, not super powerful, but it does have jump start, so you can cast it twice. And if you can double this up, four mana for four cards uh, is really, really good. Um, seeing as how right now in standard, we are happily paying six mana for four cards off of uh, Boon of the Wishgiver. So, uh, in Commander, I think four mana for four cards seems like a very reasonable rate. Uh, next, I gotta talk about one of my favorite Akoria cards, I think of the entire set that, like, one of my favorite Akoria instants. So we, we won't get into creatures, because there's so many creatures I love in the set. But, instant wise, Clash of the Titans. This card is bonkers. The minute I read this, I went, holy crap so for three red red yes it's expensive but target creature fights another target creature this is a fight spell that doesn't put your creatures on the line so you can make two of your opponent's creatures fight huh you see where this is going you double this up suddenly all of your opponent's creatures are fighting each other and you're just sitting there going okay they're they've all fought each other and died i'm gonna swing out and kill two of you now that's really, really good. I love this card so much. Uh, granted, the mana cost is a little high, but I feel that had to be a safety valve because making your opponent's creatures fight each other is just really good, especially if your opponent has a, a death toucher out. Um, <laughs> and then you're just like, oh, I guess he's fighting a bunch of things. Uh, well, if they have the, a thick death toucher, he can take the damage. Um, like uh, the, the Space Godzilla. I can't remember what the real card is right now. I just see him as Space Godzilla uh, on the one that is errata for the because of the word we can't say now on YouTube. Um, so there's that. Uh, Comet Storm is our next one. Red Red X, multi kicker of one. Um, choose target creature or player, and then choose another target or creature or player for each time Comet Storm was kicked. Comet Storm deals X damage to each of them. So you have your Red Red and then X, and whatever you put into X is how much damage the spell is going to deal, and then with the multi-kicker is how many things you can target, creatures and players included. So you can start slamming uh, that down and, you know, shoot down your opponent's board, or maybe you just need to hit your last, uh, the last two opponents in the game for a little enough damage to end the game. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, crop rotation. Um, obviously, by itself, crop rotation is not amazing, but when you're doubling it up after you pay the cost, one green mana, sacrifice a land, search your library for a land card, and then put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library so you can get any land out of your deck. No restrictions there. And then on top of that, if you double this up, 
you're sacrificing one land to get two, you're ramping. And you're getting anything. There's no restrictions. Like, that's really, really good. Um, and we'll get into some of the lands that I've put in here. Um, normally, I don't go over lands, but there are a couple in here that are actually really important for the deck. Um, next, we have a Curious Herd. Some people are on the fence about this card, but I really like it. I think it's a cute card, and I like what it does, especially when you double it up. Um, for three and a green, you get an instant. Choose target opponent, create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token, where X is the number of artifacts that player controls. Okay? So, you got Johnny Artifact over here. He's got like seven on the board. Four mana, get seven 3-3s, three seems good. You double it up. Four mana, get 14 three threes. Seems really good. Now granted, you are open to blowouts, board wipes and stuff, but this could force that wipe out of your opponent's hand that you've been trying to get them to play for a while now. So even there, I think this card has a lot of, lot of value and is very much uh, overlooked. Also, I gotta rave about this art because I absolutely love the art. Not the forefront beast, but the one in the back, uh, halfway in the background, like the, the mid-ground, not the, all the one that's all the way in the back you can barely see, but that mid-ground one, he's so derpy. I just love his expression. Like, he's so confused by this lantern he's looking at. It's fantastic. Um, next, we have Deflecting slow, uh, Swat for two and a red. This is part of the cycle that you can cast for free as long as you have your uh, commander on board. You get... Um, you may choose new targets for target spell or ability. So, obviously, you know, this doesn't seem inherently powerful out the gate. It's just, uh, I get to retarget something. But when you think about all the bonkers, powerful targeting uh, abilities and spells in Commander, the, this card is really like, this is one of those cards that at a low power table, it's gonna be low power, but at a high power table, the power level is going to skyrocket. Your opponent tries to, you know, bane fire you with their artifact ramp deck, and they're just, they're, you know, they're doing artifact ramp shenanigans, and they're trying to slam big burn X spells and just burn each player out of the game. They hit you with something like that. Then, guess what? I can't counter bane fire, but I can sure as hell redirect it to the guy next to me, and he can take that to the face. <laughs> so, like, and then not to mention there's other things like uh, your opponent ults one of their planeswalkers and is about to get the emblem and you steal the emblem. Imagine stealing a Teferi ult, uh, Hero of Dominaria, and you just get the Teferi emblem and now each time you draw a card, you're exiling your opponent's stuff. Like, the, the sky's the limit with Deflecting Swat. Um, there's a couple other, uh, other people have talked about how great this card is. Uh, definitely look into this card don't underrate or underestimate the power of this card. Um, up next, probably one of my favorite finishers in the game. Um, and again, it doesn't always have to finish, but again, copying this up can. And that's Electro Dominance. Um, you're going to be able to deal X damage to any target for red, red, and X. And then you can cast a card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying the mana cost. So you double that up and you're getting a ton of value because the X value is already established. So now you're getting twice X, um, two cards of the value of X or less, but you're effectively getting that. So really like that. Um, next we have Expansion Explosion. Speaking of X spells, uh, Expansion is gonna let you copy things that uh, instant or sorceries with a converted mana cost of four or less. And then Explosion is again another great way to kill a creature or you know dome a player out of the game and also draw a bunch of cards. So can't hate on that. Um, Factor Fiction, again, uh, just a nice little way to gain some additional card draw and value. Doubles up really nicely with Kalamax. Um, being able to Factor Fiction twice off of one Factor Fiction is really good. Um, reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So giving you the choice and your opponent, the only thing they can do is make the piles. Um, frantic search for two and a blue draw two cards then choose and discard two cards and then untap three lands so draw two discard two untap three lands but if you double this up 
you're now also untapping an additional three lands that you didn't pay into Frantic Search. So that seems really good. That's ramp in a, in a, in a way. Um, also, you're going to churn through your deck. You're drawing two cards, discarding two cards, and then you're doing it again. So you're churning through your deck. You're untapping a whole bunch of lands. Um, combos really nicely. Growth Spiral, um, two mana, draw a card, put a land from your hand into play, double it up. Even better, draw two. Uh, Harrow, as an additional cost to cast. Sack a land, search your library for up to two base land cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Really good, you double it up. Three mana, sack a land, get four basics into play. That's some value. That's some value. Um, Hunter's Insight. Uh, choose a uh, target creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker this turn, draw that many cards. Um, so doubling up Hunter's Insight on two of different creatures uh, can net you a ton of cards. Um, hunting Pack. For five green green, you get an instant, create a four four green beast creature token, and this has storm. So it's a very expensive card. Um, in some of, in my later build, this is cut out. Um, but this is uh, really fun, and it's one of those storm finishers that no one really, you know, plays a ton of because it's so expensive. So I think if you can do the the mana ramping shenanigans. Uh, to be able to storm out hunting pack for like four or five and just make a bunch of a big board I think it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be something that you know your opponent's not necessarily expecting um, probably one of the uh, most underrated add-ins you can add here is uh, mystic confluence it's kind of like a baby uh, cryptic command but without the price tag you can get these right now for like less than four dollars they're like 339 on TCG player um, so for three blue blue you get an instant choose three you may choose the same mode more than once counter target spell unless its controller pays three return target creature to its owner's hand draw a card so obviously when you double this up and you do this in response to something you can counter a spell you can draw a bunch of cards you can bounce creatures it's like whatever you need to do and then double it up it's like really really good um, natural connection, search your library for a basic land card and put it in the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. Obviously this is an instant so we can double it up a lot easier in this deck. So obviously that's why we ran this over like Kadama's Reach and uh, uh, Cultivate and stuff like that. Those cards are technically better but we can double this up a lot easier. So that's why that made the cut over those other ones. Um, Prophetic Bolt, three blue red deal four damage to target creature or player and then look at the top four cards of your library put one of them in your hand the rest on the bottom doubling that up kill two things draw two basically out but it's it's not even a draw two it's even better because you're selecting out of four so that's really really good value um card i don't know why they didn't put it in this deck it's not even like expensive they could have slapped it in here and it's not like oh my god that breaks the our reprint budget is they didn't put a pool from tomorrow in here um, they had the uh, a sorcery speed version and I'm like why wouldn't you include the instant speed one in the instant speed themed deck um, for blue blue and X draw X cards then discard a card one card obviously you double this up you're gonna have to discard another card again but you're drawing twice as many cards and discarding two. Oh no cast this for X4 and like okay here double it up draw eight this card too seems good. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm missing something here. But I don't know why they didn't put that in the deck. Um, maybe it's one of those cheap upgrades so you can feel like you accomplished something. I don't know. Um, next up we have Reverberate. This is uh, another copy spell. Uh, red, red, copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for a copy. Um, if you, uh, you'll notice I didn't put a fork in here. You can. But um, I didn't want to, because uh, I think Fork is a little pricey now. Um, I'm not entirely certain. If I remember correctly, I think Fork has started to climb. So I wanted to keep this a fairly affordable upgrade. Um, you know, something you can do with, like, in addition to the Precon, maybe $40. Um, now, the, the mana base, uh, I kind of went a little overboard on that with one specific card. 
Um, it's uh, it blows that away, but for the most part, you should be fine here. Um, and then uh, slice in twain, uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment, draw a card. Obviously, there are cheaper ways to do this, but it also comes with the card draw, and then doubling that up is going to be, you know, drawing two cards, and you're getting rid of two artifact enchantments, but you're only losing one card in your hand, so instead of cycling, you're drawing, and you're actually going up in card advantage as well. Um, Starstorm, you can, it's one of your wraths, and the fact that you can double it up and get it to, um, you know, the amount of damage that you need to actually truly wrath out some of the bigger threats of Commander um, is really nice. Uh, turnabout for two blue blue you get an instant tap or untap all artifacts creatures or lands target player controls now keep in mind when you uh, make copies of something you get to uh, you get to choose a new target so you can untap your stuff and then uh, tap down your opponent or you can untap all your stuff tap all your lands for mana and then untap again and have a big ramp for an X spell um, so there's uh, that route not to mention again if you clone this you can float a bunch of mana and then be able to cast a massive you know explosion or electro dominance or something um, and that, that just seems like it would be very fun to do. There's a lot of shenanigans you can do with this card. Uh, next, we have Twin Cast for blue, blue. Copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose any targets from the copy. It's just uh, the blue version of Reverberate, but you have both in here. Twin Cast, um, this is like $4. So, again, not much to pick up. Um, and then Veil of Summer, uh, probably. The, for the, the rarity of the card, it's probably one of the most expensive cards in here. It's sitting at like $5 and change right now on TCG Player for an uncommon, but for a green mana, draw a card if your opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control cannot be countered this turn, and you and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until end of turn. Um, so that seems really, really solid. Um, that's going to round out our instance we're going to go next to uh enchantments um we have primal empathy uh if you at the beginning of your upkeep for three mana uh you get to draw a card if you control the creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield otherwise put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control it's just steady card advantage or you're growing your creatures get, making them bigger and bigger and bigger um and more threats um Swarm Intelligence. For six and a blue, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for a copy. So each time you're casting an instant or sorcery, you're copying it up, copying it up. Your Calamax is getting big. You're doing bonkers things where you want to be. Uh, also, in that vein, Thousand Year Storm. Um, I absolutely love this card. This card is so good. Uh, Four blue red enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So you get really bonkers. You have a ton of you know spells that you've cloned off, um, and now you like, you just cast like one like especially if you've been able to do that with like a turnabout and now you've made a bunch of mana and that s small like instant and sorcery narrow storm counts at like four you can straight up win with like a big electro dominance or a big expansion explosion or something like that um so really really do like that card a lot and then finally uh wilderness reclamation it's just uh seaborne muse light but uh repetition and consistency are important in this singleton 100 card format and then finally, uh, Artifacts, uh, Arcane Signet. Don't really think I need to explain that. Commander's Sphere. Uh, Cultivator's Caravan. So not only is this a mana rock, um, but also because of the crew cost, it's a way to tap your Calamax and make sure, so that way if you can't attack in, he is, you have an alternate way to tap him. Um, 
so that way you can get the copy effect. Uh, lightning Greaves to protect your Kalamax. Um, Soul Ring, obviously. Uh, and then another great one for tapping your Kalamax, Springleaf Drum. Uh, tap, tap an untapped creature you control, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So not only does it help fix your mana and acts as like an accelerative uh, mana rock for one mana, but also it taps your Kalamax, which is gonna help you double up your instant sorceries. And then the final artifact we're playing uh, in the deck that comes with it and is, you know, I think great is Twinning Staff. For three mana, you get an artifact that if you would copy a spell one or more times, instead copy it that many times plus an additional time, you may choose new targets for the additional copy. Pay seven, tap, copy target instant sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So obviously we're already gonna be copying a bunch of stuff. This extends our copying even more, gives us even more value, and yes, seven is a lot to pay for a generic you know, copy effect, but because it's already going to copy its copy effect, fantastic, absolutely love this. So that's gonna be the deck. We're gonna move on to a few of the lands. I'm not gonna go over the full list. You can check it out in the tapped out link in the description below. But something I feel is going to help out this deck a lot is the Seiju. Um, it's a $20 land. So if you don't have the money for that, it's not necessary, but it's gonna help give you protection from more interactive decks um, that are trying to play counters and stuff because you don't want your big X spells to be countered. Um, you can, it comes into the battlefield tapped, but you can tap it, pay two life, and make a generic uh, mana that if that mana is spent on an instant or sorcery spell, that spell can't be countered by spells or abilities this turn. Um, the other thing that I think really helps out this deck is a holdout settlement. Um, it taps for colorless, or you can tap it, tap an untapped creature you control, and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it's a lot like a springleaf drum in a land, which seems bad, except you need to tap your Kalamax, and we're playing crop rotation. So crop rotation can actually fetch this out of your deck. Um, so I really, really like that in here as well. And then finally, I think one of the most important things, and it does come in the deck, but just so you know not to get rid of it, is uh, <laughs> uh, Rogue's Passage. Rogue's Passage is uh, super important for Kalamax because Kalamax needs to get tapped, and this is a way for him to attack and still be, uh, still be making sure that your opponent's bigger creatures can't mess with him in combat. Uh, four mana tap, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Help, is gonna help him get in uh, when your opponent has blockers up, so that way you can tap him if you don't have one of your tapping synergies. Um, but that's the deck tech, link in the description below. Um, you know, go ahead, leave your comments down below. What do you think of the deck? Um, I will be having another version of Kalamax out in the next couple of weeks, as I mentioned before. Um, I'm doing some really spicy, spicy things. This is probably gonna be my first attempt at a homebrew CEDH deck. I've never done it, um, and I probably will never build this deck in person because it's going to be very expensive. But if one of you absolute mad lads takes this list and does build it, let me know. I want to I want to know if the list is worth it, if it's good, blah, blah, blah. I've been studying a lot of CEDH just so I can understand the format. Um, and so I am going to post that up there. I think Kalamax might be good enough for CEDH. That being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.